Well, it's mailbag time again. There's some test gear in here, and a few other little things. I've also got a special mailbag coming up probably next week. So the big box I'll be doing last, so you can look forward to that one. In the meantime, I'll find out what else I've got in here. Right, so there'll be links down below for various items as well, including these things. These are some battery holders. So these are some 9 volt battery holders, which you can screw onto something. Screw mount them. It's like clipping holders. I got these for that uh, Level TM3B, wasn't it? Because that needed a 9 volt battery. I'm thinking, well, I could just stick a 9 volt battery on the back and not worry about modifying it too much or putting a battery inside it, that sort of thing. So I, I thought if I could get one of these like, clip on holders, I would screw one this to the back panel and then change the battery on the outside. Just have a couple of wires running through a grommet or something. And that would be a nice easy modification to that. I mean, a little 9 volt battery like this will run the thing for, you know, a while anyway. Or you've got this type as well, which are also clip-ins. That's like a holder with a switch on it as well. It's got a switch on it. So it's like a more in-line thing. So if you want to do it that way instead, you can. You can screw it shut so the battery doesn't come out, or kids don't mess with it or whatever, I suppose. But say, so, ones with switches and just plain holders. So I'm thinking this is probably going to be quite well suited to the Lavelle because it's easy to stick on the back, nice and quick to change it if you need to. I might use it for that. Links down below. If you didn't see that Lavelle TM3B repair video thing I did on it, then go and check it out. Or maybe I'll stick a link in below. I might forget. If I do forget and you're interested in it, check out my repair videos or ask me in the comments and I'll put a link down. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of get carried away when I buy things sometimes. I'm not quite sure which one to get, so I, I bought a selection. More 9 volt battery holders. So it looks like these ones have like a fold out tray, and there's actually some spring terminals in there, I don't even see them. I can just see it in there, maybe? Just there, so as you push it down, it actually can conducts onto the, or connects to the spring terminals. So you put it in with the terminals downwards, and these holes are different sizes, so you won't actually let you put it in the wrong way around. And then it touches the spring terminals, and that's what makes the contact. So that's also a flush mount version. You have to cut a big hole in the panel for that. But I thought that might be a nice one as well. That's but you know, that's a much nicer way of doing it. I think. I mean, I was thinking of these originally. I was thinking these are cheap and nice and simple, and you know, a couple of screw holes in the back, and you're done. Whereas this will obviously require me to cut a big hole in the panel. Not impossible, but it's obviously a lot more work. I thought these looked like they're quite nice. So I've got a few different ones. This is exactly the same. Um, so I've got a selection of different 9 volt battery holders now. Excellent. <laughs> I'm not quite finished with the battery holders, it would seem. <laughs> all arrived all at once. So these are just simple holders, clip-in holders. So if you actually have already a connector for the battery, you could screw this to a panel, and then you can just clip the battery into this side on, all right? So the battery goes in sideways. So you clip it in. So just a clip-in holder, a bit of spring steel. Even simpler if you've already got a battery connection set up. Obviously, you don't have one, you probably want to use the other types. But if you do have a battery holder already, or battery connection already, but you need some way of retain the battery in place, you've got these little clips as well. Okay, hopefully that's it for the battery stuff now. I can't promise that though. Okay, maybe this is the last of the battery holder stuff. <laughs> um, uh, so these are some more panel mount versions. But they're skinnier, which means you get into a tighter space, I suppose. And this is just a compartment, right? So it's not quite as nice as the other one in that way. But you also have the leads which come through, right? So you, what you have to do, obviously, is feed the lead through into the compartment, or the wires through, or I don't know, somewhere or other, you know, through the back there, right? So then your battery will sit in there, with the connections on the bottom like that. Um, but this is good if you've got a like, smaller cutout available to you compared to what's available for this one. Like, obviously, you know, 
footprints, you know, two thirds of size, I suppose, for the cutout. Again, another option. And again, because I didn't quite know which way I was going to go with this yet. Cutting. Oh, there is something in there. Right. It's actually sealed. That's interesting. This is rare. Or at least it's hard to get. It's a HP probe. This crocodile probe thing. Now this is actually a 11073A. This is meant for the it's HP 3406A, I think it was. Hold on, I need to check. A few moments later. Yeah, that's correct, it's the HP 3406A. And that's the ball brand sampling multimeter, which I've got to do a repair video on yet. And I was thinking, well, I've only got, you know, the basic probe that came on it. And I went looking, because the manual mentioned all these other probe kits and stuff you can get. I was looking, thinking, maybe I can find one of these probe kits. The best I could find was this, so far anyway. I'll keep looking, I think. And this means you can actually then just hook this up to it, but the idea is you get the existing probe and you shove it in the bore of this and it'll connect up down there. It's a bit like an oscilloscope probe kind of set up. And that will then connect to that. So you can grip onto things instead of having to manually probe with a spike, I suppose. I don't know. See if you know any more of these probe kits that suit that HP 3406A, let me know because I will be interested in getting the actual full kit for it. I assume I'm going to get the thing working, I've got to do a video about that yet and actually get into it, but uh, watch out for that. I don't know if it's cutting what's inside it. Yes, I know, I had to abandon my random knife for a second. How's oh, that for timing? It's the HP 3406A ball bearing sampling voltmeter operating service manual, original copy. Lovely. 10th of April 1969 is this fold out here. This is 66. So I think this actually suits my unit. I don't remember now. But uh, it's got some notes in there. Nice. So it's got circuit diagrams and board layouts and stuff like that in it, so when I do come to repair this thing then I will have all the information I need, hopefully. Very nice. It's even got oscilloscope diagrams on it. For your trombone shooting. Brilliant. So that's what the unit actually looks like. It looks like it folds out. Lovely. I haven't opened it up yet. I'm not even sure I've even powered it up yet. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Test gear box. Let's find out what's in it. Also, don't forget to check out my merch. If you're interested in merch, it helps support the channel. I've got loads of different shirts. I've got reefer capacitor shirts, magic smoke, beast stuffer shirts. I am not Dave. That's another one I've got. Um, these some? No. I'm here because you broke something. Um, oh, I don't know. I've got loads of different ones. Check them out if you're interested. Okay, well it's kind of packaged okay. Mixture of airbags and peanuts and bubble wrap. Yeah, okay. Oh, look. That's right, original manual came with it. I'll show you that in a minute. Just try and fish us out of here. That peanut's going everywhere. It's not particularly well packaged to be honest. It's okay-ish. Like, for instance, over here, you see there's basically no protection. I'll just vacuum this floor too. It's made some kind of effort. I suppose. Right, let's get this out of here. Well, this is what it looks like at the back when it's upside down. So it's completely backwards now. This really interesting socket, it's like a 
male plug on the back of the unit. That will need to be changed. Hopefully that's not a problem. So I'll turn it right around. Does that help? Anyway, it's a fluke. It's an A45AB high impedance voltmeter and null detector. So you can go from 1 microvolt up to 1000 volts apparently. And it's got a battery operation thing as well, which I doubt is even currently working. <laughs> the battery, if it's even in there, is probably dead. It's all slightly bent maybe. Oh, well, maybe not, it's just wobbly. Switch feels alright. It's got the shorting bar on this one here. Alright, so you've got the input this side, output this side, because I think it outputs a DC voltage or something relative to it. Um, and it came with a manual. <laughs> now, is this an original manual or is it a reprint? Manual is dated 1967. The main thing I want to look for is diagrams. So this is not an original manual, it's a reprint of the manual. Yeah, so you've got the diagrams here, which obviously has been copied and put back in again. Hopefully it's complete. I didn't buy it for the manual, I bought it for the unit. I mean the manual coming with it is just quite nice. But it's obviously a copy of the manual. Let's see if this overlaps are right. So we've got some junctions here from something. Above that resistor and that battery. Go this side. There we go. It's complete, it's got an overlap. So that's all pretty good. So there's actually an overlap on that diagram. And there's an overlap on this diagram here as well, so it overlapped them. So at least I had the sense to do that. And there's an overlap on that join as well. So there was overlaps between each page, which is brilliant. And there's the full diagram on this page. It looks relatively simple, actually. Layouts are hopefully clear enough. Layouts are the most likely thing to be a problem because the photocopying process doesn't really do any favours with that. This is layouts on here, but you can't really see them too well. So this could be a problem for trying to figure out where the parts are. <laughs> Lots of capacitors in there. Lots of capacitors. Excellent. <laughs> so this will be an upcoming video as well. Doing repair and this thing and checking it all out and seeing how it works. If it works. But at least I've got the full manual here. Even though if it is a, it's a pretty good copy. I'll give them some credit. It's a reasonably good copy. Oh, there we go. There's layouts on this page. That's much nicer. Layouts on there. Brilliant. So I can read all that perfectly. So that's really good. It's got a Tektronix lab label on here. So Tektronix did the last calibration on it in 2011. So 12 years ago was the last calibration this thing appeared to have. Calibration void stick on the side, probably from the cellar. And on this side. Nothing on the top or the bottom. Oh, yes, there is one on the bottom there as well, which is from somebody else. So check out my other videos down below there, especially my repair video series when I'm doing lots of test gear repairs. Subscribe if you're already subscribed, and there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy a bit of test gear like this to do videos about. That's where the Patreon money goes. I reinvest it back into the channel, and I use it to buy things like this to do videos. That's where it goes. It doesn't go in my pocket. If anything, running channel costs me money. I spend a fair bit of money on his channel and you know Patreon supporters and the YouTube memberships that go towards that and merch purchases, the few that I get, um, they will help me to buy this test gear to work on to do videos. So catch you later.